too many slices and you don't know what to do with them? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with many slices by giving structure to your slicer panel. And also how to clearly show what filters have been applied to your report page. So basically we're going to build the ultimate slicer panel. Let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's have a look at how we can optimize our slicer panel. Now, a first thought might be, why do we need a slicer panel in the first place if it takes space away from my report page? Well, actually, I always recommend use the filter page. However, I often get objections. Now, some objections that I often hear against using the filter pane is that some people don't think that the filter pane is intuitive enough for the end user, or they have filters in place that configure the report and they don't want the end user to touch these filters. Or the last reason is that slicer panels just look good and they want them on their report. So for those people that really want to have their slicer panel, let's have a look how we can optimize it. Now for this example, we're going to use these slices over here as a starting point. Now, what exactly is used on the slice and which fields, that's not so important here, it's about how we can structure them and clearly show them on a slicer panel and also show clearly what filters are applied to the report page. Now as a first step, let's add a background to our slicer panel. So let's go to insert, shapes, and then from here, let's choose the rectangle and we're going to place it behind our slices. Now to get it behind the slices, and we can go over here to format and then send backward, or we go here to view, open the selection pane, and then from here, you see we have the shape, and which needs to be all the way at the bottom over here. So now looking at the selection pane, you can see I gave each slicer an intuitive name so that everything is nicely organized, and you know exactly where to click, and when you want to select a certain slicer, and from here, we can also group them. And that is important because we have here slices that have a filter for product related attributes. And we have slices that have a filter on location related attributes. So we can take over here, for example, those location slices, click on the three dots, group, and then group them. All right, then you do the same for the other ones. So here we have the product slices, Click on the three dots and let's group those as well. All right, now we can rename them. So group two, that is the product slices. So over here, product slices. And the other one, there we have the location slices. And the next thing that I want to do is make my slices a little bit more readable. So let's go over here and open up these two groups and then select all of them, holding the control key and the shift key. And then we go to formatting and we want to format the values and we want to apply a background color. All right, so the background color is going to be, in this case, white. And then maybe for the slicer header, there we can also change the font color to white. Now for the next step, it is important that you double check the alignment. So with all of the slices still selected, I go to format, and then here align, and then distribute vertically. Now for me, nothing changed because I already did this before, but you see that the space in between the slices vertically is exactly the same. And then also make sure that we have over here everything nicely aligned to the left or to the right, and that all of the slices are exactly having the same width and height. Now the next thing that we can do is create bookmark pages for the different slicer groups that we have. Now, over here we just have two, but this could also be three, four different slicer groups. So for our case here, it's just product slices and location slices. So I'm gonna go here to view, and then we can open here the bookmarks pane. And then from here, we can create our bookmarks. So now we can create two bookmarks, one that shows the product slices and one that shows the location slices. All right, so let's hide the location slices first, add a bookmark, and this is then the bookmark for the product slices. Let's call it like that. And then I'm going to hide the product slices, show the location slices, and then add a bookmark for the location slices and let's rename it. Okay, so if I click here on product, the product slices show, and if I click here on location, the location slices show. So that's working. Now the next thing that we need to do is go here to more options for each bookmark. And then here we have check marks for data because we want to capture the filter state. 
we want to capture the display state, whether it shows or not. And do we need current page? No, not really. And the associated page we can turn off. And also here, all visuals are selected visuals. Now here we recommend to always go for selected visuals. We don't have to capture the state of anything else except the slices. So I'm going to switch to selected visuals. And then the same thing that we can do here for product. So also here, turn off current page and selected visuals. Okay, so now we just have to update the bookmarks to make sure that everything works correctly. So let's go over here and select the product slices group, select the location slices group, make sure that the location slices are hidden. Then I go here to the product bookmark, click on the three dots and update it. Then the same thing for location. So let's hide the product slices, show the location slices, make sure that both of the groups are selected. And then over here, we update the location bookmark. All right, now let's see if that works. Product bookmark, location bookmark, perfect. All right, the next thing that we can do is we can overlap the product slices with the location slices, all right? Now for this, I'm just going to show the product slices as well. And then over here, we select both groups. Then we go to format, align, and then align to the bottom. Okay, now it might be that you still need to resize it a little bit so that it exactly overlaps. You see there's a bit of a difference. However, after that, we can switch back and forth between the two slicer groups. Now, after you made sure that they exactly overlap, now you can try again the bookmarks. You'll see we jump back and forth between the two slicer groups without the slicers jumping all over the place. All right. So then the next thing is that we need to add the buttons that people can click on to switch between the two slicer groups. Now, this is very easy because now that we have the bookmarks, we can go here to insert and then we go to buttons. And then from here we have the navigator buttons and bookmark navigator is what we need. So let's select it. And that gives us two buttons, one for each bookmark that we can now use to switch back and forth between the two slicer groups. So let's add it here on the slicer panel resize it a little bit, just like this. Then in the selection pane, you have to double check that it is positioned correctly. So let's take it outside of that group. So let's drop it over here at the top. Let's close these two slicer groups. I want to have it maybe here, just above the background. Okay, so let's also rename that one. So over here we have the background for the slicer panel. Okay, so now we should be able to click here on location, holding the control key. I see now we see all of the location slices. If we click on product, we see all of the product slices. Perfect. Now, if you think, okay, that works and it's pretty cool. However, Buzz, it is really ugly what you've built. I agree. However, formatting, we're going to do at the end. Now, the next thing that we're going to have a look at is how can we clearly show what filters are applied to the report? Now, how to show what filters are applied to a report page basically just comes down to writing a measure that shows all of the applied filters. Now, how to write that measure? Well, there we have different options. Now, the easiest probably is to use Deck Studio. Now, here, Deck Studio is an external tool, so you have to install it first. And then over here at the top of the ribbon, there we have external tools, and we can open Deck Studio. And then here on the left hand side, you see all of your tables, and just right click on one of them. And here we can define the filter dump measure. All right. Now, we want to have it for all of the tables. All right, so let's click on that. And here you have the DEX code that we can just copy over and put in a measure. All right, so let's select the whole thing. Control A, Control C to copy. And then we just go back to Power BI. And here we can create a new measure. So let's press Control V to paste it over here. And then we can scroll all the way to the top. And here at the top, we don't need this beginning part in front of the equal sign. So we can call this one Show Filters one. Now you see, it is a humongous measure that basically checks for every single column in your data model if there is a filter applied. Now let's walk through an example here. So it checks first if there's a filter on that specific column and then returns over here the filter values, the filter items, counts how many items and then does a top end so that when there is a field where we have more than three items selected, then it cuts it off. And so that is that variable that you see there at the top, okay? Then all of these items then get concatenated using the concatenate X function. And we want to have a comma in between. And then what do we want to return in the end? Over here, that's the X. Well, we want to have, first of all, the name of that filter, dim channel, that's the table, channel description is the column. 
And then we basically return the concatenated filter items. And if it goes over uh, three, the maximum, then dot, dot, dot. All right. And then over here in the end, after return, this unique car character 10 especially, I make sure that we go to a new line. So you see, it is a pretty heavy measure, so you might want to consider to slim it down a little bit uh, before you take it into production. However, it is super quick, super easy, and uh, once you get maybe a new slicer for a field that's not here just yet, either redo it or simply just copy over here this part and then just adapt it to the new field. All right, so this is option number one. So let's now use that measure on a table visual and let's put that table visual then on a slicer panel. Add over here a table to the slicer panel and the table we're going to put over here at the top where we have a little bit of space. How much space you're going to give it, that's totally up to you. And then we're going to go to the measure show filters and we're going to add it to our table. At the moment, nothing is selected. So to try it out, I'm just going to put in a random filter over here on the class name. So over here, let me make a selection and maybe also here on color. So over here, just like this. And then we can resize that table visual a little bit. So just make sure that that scroll bar doesn't show. All right. Now, this looks already a little bit better. I see every time when we change the slicer filters that nicely updates. And when we switch now to the location filters, now you see, oh, well, all of the filters are reset because I made a mistake before. Well, what did I do wrong is when I added over here the bookmarks, I also had a check mark here for the data because I thought, okay, we need to capture the filter state. However, that's actually not what we want. We want to not have a check mark here for data and the same over here so that we don't reset the filters to the state that was there when we created the bookmarks. Okay, so let's just make sure that that check mark in front of data is not there anymore. Okay, so let's see if it works. I'm going to switch back to product. Now I'm going to put my filters in place. All right, so over here, make my selection and then here for color as well. All right, then I switch to the location group and the location filters. You see the filters are still in place, perfect. Then over here we can make a selection. So let's select a certain country, just like this, switch back, and it works as it's supposed to work. And we can clearly see which filters are applied. Now you see it works, however, we can of course still improve quite a bit. Now for this measure, for example, instead of us showing here dim location table, country column, well, it's not very user friendly. So if we go back there to that measure, then over here we can look for well, that specific column, let's go to the location column. And here we have dim location country. This is basically the name that shows. And then uh, we can, for example, get rid of dim location like this. And you see there, now it doesn't take that much space anymore and it's also easier to read. Okay, now let's have a look at an alternative way how we could write this measure. And this time we're gonna do it from scratch. So it will take a little bit more time. So let's go over here, write a new measure. And let's call this one show filters two. And here we could start with an if function, just like uh, the previous measure. And we first wanna know if there's a filter in place on uh, the slicer column. So the first one that we have there is class name. And if there's a filter, let's go to the next line. Now here we can write a variable that contains all of the selected items uh, from that slicer. So var items is equal to, and here we can use a distinct function or values function. So I'm gonna go here for values, which, this, uh, which gives us then all of the uh, values that are visible within the filter context. So over here, we can then refer to class name again. And then we can go to the next line and combine all of these items. So items combined. And the way to combine it is with concatenate x. All right, now what is the table? Well, over here, the items, that is the table with one column that contains all of the unique items in that column that are visible within the filter context. Then for the expression, we can just refer to the class name column again. And then for the delimiter, now, instead of a comma, let's go for something else. Let's go here for this unique car 10, right? Which is a line break. So instead of having everything on one line, we're going to go to the next line for our items, okay? Which will create a very organized look when we add it to a table. All right, so the rest is optional, so we can just leave it out for now. And over here, we can go to the next line where we can then return 
the items combined. And then at the end, we can again have this Unicar 10 character. All right, and that's basically it. Then we can then uh, re close the if function and we just have to repeat this uh, for all of the other fields for which we have slices. So don't forget this ampersand over there. I copy it. And with a snap of my fingers, I have all of the fields here that we are using for our slices. Okay, now one important thing though, is this only returns the selected items, not the header, so the field name. For that, we're going to create a second measure. All right, so let's do that also quickly. Now let's rename this one to show filters to headers. All right, and here we can follow kind of the same similar logic. So also here we can say if, and then it's filtered. All right, we want to check the class name. All right, just like before, that's the same. And if it's filtered, then we want to, well, return the header. So that's going to be for this one, class, maybe colon, or however you like it, and a space. And we want to combine this with, and here we just have to add as many line breaks as we have selected items. Now, how can we do that? With the repeat function. So wrapped. Now, what is the character that I want to repeat? This line break, unicar 10. And how many times do we want to repeat it? Well, we can just count the rows of, well, the number of selected items. So over here we can do values again and then refer to the class name column. Close the brackets, close the bracket for the repeat function and close the bracket for the if function. And again, snap your fingers and here we repeat the same logic for all of the fields that we're using it in our slices. All right, so now the next thing is that we have to add it to our table visual. So let's go back to our slicer panel and I'm going to remove what we have here in columns. Let's take it out. Instead of that, we're going to have show filters, headers and show filters and now we just have to resize it a little bit. So play around with the column widths. All right, just like this. Perfect. And now we just have to clean it up. Okay, so the header, well, that doesn't look great. So how can we improve that? Well, over here, let's rename the first one to maybe applied filters or something like filters. All right. And then for the second one, I don't want to show a name at all. So just a space, enter, and it appears empty. All right, that looks already a little bit cleaner. Now you see, with this second approach, we have the items on separate rows, which might make it a little bit easy to read. However, that's of course a personal thing. Now the downside would be that it vertically takes a little bit more space. So if we don't allocate so much space for this applied filter section, and then we have, let's say more. So let's put in more items and let's resize a little bit more. Then at some point, and you see you get the, the, the scroll bars. Now, of course, over here, I can resize it so that we don't have the horizontal one, but you would have a vertical slice, a vertical scroll bar. Now, if you're afraid that you might have, let's say 100 items for a certain field, then make sure that you integrate a top end function uh, so that uh, you cut it off after, let's say three, four items, just like in that very first measure. Now, of course, this applied filter section is something that you really need because if we have different groupings that we can switch between using these bookmarks, then you, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to see at one point what filters are applied. So uh, it's super helpful to have an overview of the applied filters. Now, what also makes it much more user friendly is to have a clear all filters button. So let's create that quickly. Now, how would that work? Well, we can again go here to insert and create here a button and this is going to be a blank button. And let's place that button here at the bottom of our applied filters table. And here we can add some text. So let's go to format, add some text and say clear filters. Now again, we're not focusing just yet on formatting. So let's leave it as it is. And the second thing that we need here is a bookmark that basically captures the filter state when nothing is selected in the slices. Okay, so we have to go over here, open the selection pane and then one by one, we can select over here the slicer and just make sure that nothing is selected. All right, so clear all of the filters. Okay, so let's do that quickly. And now we can select all of the slices over here in the selection pane and then create another bookmark. So let's click here on that. And then this over here is going to be our clear filters bookmark. And here it's important that we capture the data state. Now we do need that check mark. The display state is not so important. So over here, I'm going to get rid of that check mark. And over here, 
current page is also not important. All right, and we only want to have it for the selected visuals. All right, perfect. And now we just have to click on update to make sure everything is captured correctly. And that's it. Now you probably noticed that here in this bookmark navigator, we have now a new button, which hmm, is actually not a button that I want. Now, how can we make sure that clear filters doesn't show? For that, we need to group the product bookmark and the location bookmark. All right, so we're going to group them together. And this is going to be then over here for the uh, slicer groups. Once you have a group, then you can go back to the bookmark navigator, go here to bookmarks, and then here from the drop down, select slicer groups. And now the clear filters bookmark button is gone from our bookmark navigator. Perfect. All right, now let's see if the clear filters bookmark works. Okay, so if we make a selection here, all right, filters in place, I click here on the bookmark and see it resets the filters. Okay, so that works. Now we just have to attach it to the clear filters button. So select the button, go here to action, open it up, and then over here we want to have a bookmark action. What is the bookmark? Clear filters, and that's it. Now we can make a selection again, hold the control key, click on the button, and reset the filters. So the functionality is there, however, it is still ugly. So let's improve the design so that it also actually looks good. All right, now, first of all, I'm going to change the background color, the standard blue, well, it's nothing special, right? So let's change that and go here to style and choose a different color. Now, I already have a color in mind, so let's go here to more colors. I'm just going to paste in the hex code that I wanna use, this one over here. And if you like, you can also play around with the transparency. Let's for now just put it on 50. Now, after you applied a background color, let's get rid of the borderline around it. All right, so that looks a little bit better. However, the slices are not really readable anymore, at least the headers are not. So let's change that. Let's add another shape. And now I'm not going to go for the rectangle with the sharp corners. I'm going to make it a little bit smoother by using the over here rounded rectangle. Where do we want to have it? You see that shape pops up over here. So I'm going to place it here at the bottom because it needs to be behind all of the slicer buttons. So over here, also behind the bookmark navigator. And now we slide it over here and just position it behind the buttons. Now, only when you deselect it, uh, it pops up in the right place, right? But uh, for now, we still need it to be selected. Then we can go here to shape. And here we can play around with the rounded corners. So let's put that to 10%. Then for the fill color, well, let's go for something different than the blue again. So over here, I also have a color in mind. So let's go to more colors. And here I am going to paste in the hex code that I want to use. All right, that already looks better. I see we have nicely rounded co corners and now we can get rid of the border as well. And maybe here, let's add just a bit of shadow so that it looks as it flows on top of it, right? So over here, let's open the shadow part. I think by default, there's maybe a bit too much shadow. So over here, let's increase the transparency to let's say 90 or maybe a bit lower, 85. Just like this. Now you might have to resize it again after applying a bit of shadow. You see, uh, it uh, also changes the size of the shape itself. All right, so this looks a little bit better. And maybe the background of the slicer panel, I'm just gonna make it a bit wider, just like this. You see, we have to realign the slices so that they're nicely in the middle, but for now, this is okay. So then the buttons themselves, so over here for the bookmark navigator, also that, well, this is still the default, let's make it a bit prettier. So let's select it, go here to format, style. I'm going to make the text bold, all right, so that's a bit more readable. And then we can go over here to fill and also choose matching colors. So let's click on more colors, put in and the color that you want. I already have this type of bluish gray. And then for the selected state, so here state and then selected, there I also want to have a different color. Let's go for this one here. Now to make it match the other shape there with the rounded corners, we have to go here to shape and then rounded corners, let's put it up a bit. Let's put it this one to maybe 20. No, that's too much. Now let's put it to 10. 
all right just play around it with it until you're happy and then here at the border we also need to turn off and then we can add a bit of shadow and resize the buttons now you see that looks already a little bit better just make sure that everything is also nicely aligned in the middle so here for the product slice and location slices and that you position it well now another thing that i probably would do here is rename the headers so here we have class name and color name well color would be enough right so i go to the slices and rename them so for example here class name can be class color name can be color then another thing that you might want to consider is to use icons instead of the names that we have here for the slicer groups now in this case I just have eight slices, but just imagine you would have three, four slicer groups. Well, that's not gonna fit. So instead of having your product and location, I could use an icon instead. Now, where do you find these icons? Just open up your browser, and then you can go to a website like unicodetable.com and search for whatever character. Now, I searched here for a laptop. Now, let's say that's the product we are selling, and then just copy it, so click here on copy, go back, and then here for your bookmarks, open the slicer groups, and then here we can just rename it and use that icon. Huh? So you can put a, that icon right in front of it. And then for location, we can do the same thing. For example, a globe could make sense, right? Something like this. Okay, so just search for it, copy it over. And you see, that looks quite all right. However, it's kind of small. However, just imagine uh, that you would not have product and location here. No, let's, let's do this. I'm gonna select the slicer, style, now let me increase the font size so that you can see it. So over here, I'm going to put the font size to 22. This is for the default. So uh, you see only that icon. Let me also do it for the selected one, 22. You see, then it doesn't take that much space. Now, of course, the icon that you're going to use needs to make sense and correspond to the type of slices and uh, you will see when you click on it. All right. Now for our purposes, I'm just going to change back to uh, font size 10, what we had before. And the next thing that we can focus on is then the filter section to make that look a little bit better, right? So I'm going to put a few slices in place. So let's put a slicer for the country and then here switch to product. And here I'm going to select a few colors. All right. And maybe also here manufacturer. All right, that works, but it doesn't match what we have here at the bottom yet. And also we have to make sure that that nicely fits. All right, so over here, let's make this a bit smaller and this a little bit wider. All right, so that looks okay. Now also here we could use a background so that we have a bit more contrast and just like we have here at the bottom. So I'm going to take the background shape and then copy paste it and just slide it a little bit up and then resize it over here. Perfect. And you see at the moment, I'm not leaving a lot of white space around it, which is important. So I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller and also here so that it looks a bit less crowded. Okay, now that shape, needs to be here at the bottom. So that's behind over here the table. Okay, just like this. Now the table itself should not overlap that button. So I'm just gonna make that smaller and slide the button down a bit. Now here for the background of this shape, maybe let's choose something different. So I'm gonna go to style, color, and choose a bit lighter color, this one over here. And then we can make this button a little bit prettier. Now so make sure that you don't go for the straight angles there for the corners, but go here to shape and then also choose rounded corners. In this way, it nicely matches huh? also the other shapes. And then we can go here to style again, maybe make the text bold, all right? And then apply also a different background color, so fill. And here I go for maybe this lighter purple grayish, all right? And then we can turn the border off and maybe add a little bit of shadow and then resize it. And I'm just going to make the text a little bit smaller. So text, and let's put this to eight or nine. Clear filters, just like this. And here for the table that shows the applied filters, let's select it again and just update the formatting of the header. And so here, column headers, and here I want to have it in bold. And I do not want to see the background, all right? So the background color is going to be the same as that shape. And for the font size, let's maybe just set the font size a bit higher, just like this. And because it's a table, you can nicely sort everything. That functionality is still there, which is kind of nice. Now, once you have everything, then also make sure that in the selection pane, you clean everything up. So I'm going to select all of these items. Maybe you want to group them together as well, just like this. And this is then over here, the applied filter section. So applied filter section. Now I'm kind of happy with this. Just I double check the alignment. I think it's a little bit off here. So I have to play around with that. Probably would make it just a little bit wider, this background, so that we have more space around the different filter sections. 
And of course, as the very last step, always double check if everything still works. So let's do that quickly. I'm gonna have put some filters in place. So over here, class, then over here we go to color. Okay, perfect. Filters pop up. Let's also put a filter in place for location and put one for Germany. All right, and clear the filters. That resets everything. Perfect, it is working. Now maybe one more thing that would be really nice to have here for our slices is a visual indicator that a filter has been applied to that slicer, like you have for, well, the normal filter and pane, right? There we can just say, okay, if a filter is applied, different background color. But for slicers, this is a bit tricky. Now, let me show you why. I'm going to select one of the slices, doesn't matter which one. And then over here, we can go to format, effects, and then add a background. So over here, you probably noticed there is a conditional formatting button, which means, okay, we can write a formula, a measure right, that says, okay, if there's a filter, in this case, for the class name, then apply a color, otherwise no color. Now, this is what you expect. However, that is not gonna work. Let me show you why. So over here, let's add a new measure. I'm going to call this one conditional formatting is filtered. All right, and let's start with the if function again. And then over here, we want to check if is filtered. And here we are checking the class name, all right? And if it is filtered, then we want to have the color, let's say yellow, okay? And if not filtered, then we don't want to show a color at all. That's so basically invisible background, which you can do with the following trick, which I showed in previous videos, so RGBA. And then you can just return black, for example, like this. But that last argument is the transparency. And if you set that to zero, then you just have transparency, full transparency. All right, so then we can close the if function and use it for conditional formatting. So here I'm going to click on conditional formatting for the background color and then field value. And now we can go here to matrix and there it is. All right, click okay. And well, nothing happens. And if I select over here one of the classes, all right, filters in place and oh, no yellow background color. Hmm, not what we, what we were hoping for. Now, why does it work? Well, let me show you when it does work, okay? And that is if I would create another slicer. Over here on that slicer, I'm going to have the class, all right, so class name. And now, just to avoid confusion, I'm going to clear that selection over here from that other class filter. And if we now make our selection huh, from that new slicer filter, then you see, ah, yellow background gets applied. So it is working. However, well, there needs to be filter context. And that is only there when there's another visual that kind of filters, has a filter interaction with that slicer. Okay, and that filter action you see here in the format, added interactions, you see there's a filter interaction. Okay, now probably not exactly what we need here because what we wanna have here is that we could make a selection for that specific field and that the measure recognizes, okay, these are selected. However, that slicer itself, by making your selection, doesn't have any filter context. So basically all of the classes are still there. And therefore, the conditional formatting doesn't do anything. So is it possible? Not really. I mean, there's a workaround though, but that requires us to insert a shape, all right? And then use that one. So let me show you. We could, for example, create over here a circle. And then let me make this one a little bit smaller, just like this. All right, and I'm going to put that circle right in front of glass. And after you exactly position that circle in front of the header, now we can go to the shape formatting options, style, and then here under fill, there we have the FX button, right? So here we can click on FX, choose field value, then choose CF is filtered, the measure that we wrote before, click OK, and there you go. All right, now it seems to have disappeared because uh, there's no selection there. I'm just going to turn the border off, all right? Nothing shows. However, when we make a selection and we put a filter in place on class, and there you go, a shape appears because now it applies the yellow background color. And if there's no selection in place, just like this, it disappears again, all right? Now, if you find this annoying because uh, you would have to create a separate measure for every slicer, hmm, not great, you could go for an alternative. You could also in the measure, instead of only checking class name, you could check all of them. And you might say, yeah, but that's not gonna work. Well, let's have a look. So now if I put a filter in place on class, 
it works. However, the problem is it is also checking the other ones. Now, if I would go to color, however, and put a field in place, then, well, there's also a field in place in one of those fields, and mm, it also shows, which is not correct, right? Because there's no field in place for class. Now, how can you make sure that doesn't happen? Well, select the color slicer, go to format, add the interactions, okay? And then here, make sure that it doesn't interact with that circle, okay? So you have to select all of the other slices and make sure that they don't, don't interact with that circle. And the easiest way to do that is just uh, use the selection pane, click on none, and then quickly do that for all of them, okay? And then you need to do this also for every single shape, right? Because now we just have one circle there for the class, and then we need to repeat it for all of the other ones. Now, quite some effort to set this up, so hopefully they're going to make this a bit easier. However, if you really need it, this is how it can be done. Now, maybe you don't want to show this all the time on the right-hand side, then of course we could create a button that when you click on it, it opens up and a closing button to close it. However, there are many examples already out there that show exactly how to do that. Now, this is how I would build the ultimate slicer panel. Now, let me know your thoughts. Maybe you have some other good ideas, then share them in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos with tips and tricks around slices, then check these videos over here. And I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Pssh.